Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about spray drift, managing spray drift on farms. So basically what that is, is when farmers are out spraying any pesticides, making sure that the spray stays in the field and on target, as opposed to moving off target into other areas. Well, first of all, before any farmer heads out to the field to do some spraying, he looks at what the weather is right now and what the weather is going to be for the next several hours while he's going to be spraying. Let's take today for an example. Now, obviously we aren't spraying this time of year, but if we were, we've got a little bit of a wind out of the north. So we're concerned about, well, how much is that wind? How long is that wind going to be blowing? What's it going to be like later in the day? Typically for farmers, they'll try to spray early in the morning and later on into the evening. That's when there's normally less wind. Usually the heart of the day is when the wind's blowing the hardest and farmers will try to avoid that. Well, what farmers are looking for is miles per hour of wind speed being 10 or less. So if it's 10 miles an hour or less, then usually we're in pretty good shape. But still, even if it's six miles an hour, four miles an hour, we still have to be concerned about that. So what we're trying to do here is make the droplet size a little bigger. The bigger the droplet size, the quicker it's going to get to the ground and the less chance it can get picked up in any different wind. Well, okay, and here today the wind's out of the north. So if I was spraying in this field, I'd be concerned about, well, what What's the crop to the south? What's going to be there? And if we've got the same crop as the neighbor, maybe we're spraying for bugs and soybeans today and our neighbor has soybeans across the fence. Well, it's no big deal if there was just a tiny little bit of drift, but let's just say that he has corn over there and I'm spraying my soybean field trying to kill any volunteer corn that was left from last year. Now it's a big concern. And what I might do as a farmer too is say, okay, I'm gonna switch so I've got great big droplets so I don't have drift. I'm also gonna leave that last pass next to his field because or it's more. Or yeah, it's as a buffer. Too, it's just too windy, so I'm going to leave a buffer over there. Now, another thing that farmers will do is let's just say the wind is pretty calm right now, but it's going to pick up in the next hour or so, according to the weather forecast. Well, that farmer might spray the outside borders of his field first when the wind is calm. Then if the wind does get to be blowing a little bit, he's out in the middle of his field and won't have any drift potential of hurting anyone else. Okay, I want to come back to how does the farmer make the droplet size bigger? Well, there are two main ways that this happens. Number one is by switching spray nozzles and that's usually what we recommend to most people. So with certain spray nozzles they will literally make the drop size bigger and make the drop size more consistent. The other choice is a farmer can use what we would call a drift retardant. It will in effect make that liquid a little bit more thick and when it's thicker then the droplet size does get bigger. And you could possibly use both, but most farmers are going to use either one or the other. The other thing that farmers can do on their spray booms, like Brian said, switching to different drift control tips. Well, on the back of a spray boom, farmers can put on three-way or five-way nozzles. And what that'll do is at each point on that spray boom where a farmer is going to be spraying, there could be multiple nozzles there that he could choose from. So at the start of the day, let's just say that it's relatively calm, maybe a one mile an hour breeze, you know, virtually nothing. Well, you can go out with a flat fan tip that sprays smaller droplets and does a little bit better job of coverage. This is really good for some contact weed killers and getting good coverage on lots of leaves of broadleaf weeds that have multiple growing points. But as the wind picks up, he can just go back and literally within a couple of minutes, even on a big spray boom, the farmer can just click, 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 click down the row, click each one of those multiple nozzle bodies over to the drift control nozzle. It's a really handy way to go. Versus if you're putting drift control in the spray tank, you've already mixed up enough to spray 100 acres out. Well, you're pretty much set for the next hour or two that this is what you're gonna be spraying regardless of if the wind is going up and down. Well, once again, managing spray drift is a very important issue for farmers. And we just wanted you to hopefully, if you're a non-farmer, understand a little bit more that farmers do take a lot of time. They do take many steps to make sure that whatever they're spraying stays in their field and does not move off target. Well, if a farmer has much of our weed of the week out there, he'll definitely be out spraying. Can you identify this week's weed?